You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's so you me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Chord Progressions. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go, girl. Alrighty. <clears throat> Pat, for the last time, I only like girls. I'm a lesbian. Puh. Thought you were a... <clears throat> I thought you were American. Rather, if we care to... No. Okay. You're American. What the hell? He gives April a cheeky smile while she just glares unamused. Pat knows lesbian and American and not mutually... Pat knows lesbian and American are not mutually exclusive, right? Or is this some sort of inside joke? Whatever. Hey, April, Dave needs us to swap stations. I need to spend some time out here with Pat. Holy fuck, thank you! April briskly storms off that explanation, leaving me with the collie. What's her deal? She doesn't appreciate my uh, creative thought experiments, is all. Creative thought experiments? What on God's green earth does that mean? Do I even ask? Oh, which reminds me, I got one for you too. I guess I have no choice in the matter. Would you rather go one year without sex or go one year without your favorite food? That struck a nerve. I'm not really sure how long it's been since I last had sex, or every year at least. Living with parents makes hooking up difficult. On top of that, Fairview didn't have the best of prospects. Many frequenters of the hookups app were, clo were closeted married men looking to cheat on their wives. Hard pass for me. Aside from that, it was slim pickings and frequent rejection. Many of the men I messaged were quick to dismiss me because of my weight, my penis size, or even my species. After all that rejection, I couldn't bring myself to keep using those apps anymore, so I stopped. It was probably for the best. Who was a creepy, fat, doofy-looking fox? Pat snaps his digits at me a few inches from my eyes. Um, you okay? You were zoning out on me. Oh, sorry, that question just kind of struck a nerve. I figured I should be honest with him. Lying about how I feel wouldn't be productive. I gotcha. Sorry, forget I said anything. He genuinely looks remorseful. Maybe he'll cool it with inappropriate comments for now. Well, um, I guess we should focus on training stuff. So, uh, a lot of folks come in during this time of day and want to try out some merchandise. He gestures to the many patrons in the store sampling the instruments for sale. Some instruments are labeled with a try me tag. That means the customer can just take it and try it without permission. The more expensive ones have a tag that say, please ask for assistance. Pat goes over the general etiquette customers must follow while handling them while handling the merchandise. He also gives me some guidelines about following up with customers as they sample an instrument. I spent some time making rounds about the shop, finding players who were trying out instruments and asking them questions. Based on their answers, Pat was able to gauge if the customer is looking to buy. Turns out lots of folks just like to come in and sample the instruments with no intention of buying anytime soon, just like Daryl did today. Pat mentioned that Chester actively encourages this. Being hospitable to these customers helps foster good, good report. Sure, they may not buy today, but they may buy tomorrow, or maybe they'll tell their friends and family where to buy. You can't lose. Ugh. Plus, even if they don't buy an instrument, they may grab a latte instead. I'm starting to piece together the functionality of this wild business model that Chester and Dave have concocted. I have to give credit to those two. They stumbled onto something great here. I'm glad to get to, I'm glad to, get to, be, uh, I'm glad to get to be a small part of it. The next hour flew by rather quickly, just shy of four, just shy of four o'clock when Chester shows up. How are you two doing up here? Not causing any trouble, right? His tone suggested he was mostly joking. However, I think he might be a tad worried that trouble may be brewing. Nah, I was just getting Eddie caught up on our on our try before you buy policy. Fantastic, great work. He gives Pat a firm pat on the shoulder. The dog flashes his signature toothy grin in response. Well, I can take over from here. You're free to go if you want. Sweet! I'm gone then. See you guys tomorrow. Nikali made a swift exit. So, how are you doing? Getting overwhelmed? Uh, maybe a little bit. It's a lot for a first day. I understand. There's a lot of new people, a lot of new information, and very little time to process it all. Chester places a paw on my shoulder. In time, it'll all come together. I genuinely couldn't ask for a better first day from you. I couldn't tell. I could tell he's being sincere. It's relieving to have this reassurance. Are you sure you still want to help me close down? April's about to leave. This is your last chance to back out. As tempting as it is to head home and relax for the rest of the day, I have every reason to stay here. 
First off, I want that overtime money. Secondly, I need to keep my brain occupied. I know if I head home now, the rest of the night is going to be spent in my room alone, endlessly wallowing in self-pity. I need to work until I drop. No, I'm fine. I want the overtime. Great. It's nice to have an extra set of paws for closing. Do you normally close by yourself? Normally, no, but we've been short staff lately, so I've taken on that responsibility. Mind if I ask why that is? So far, I think the short staffing is the only piece of the puzzle that I can't figure out. Chester's a great boss. This is a great work environment. The pay isn't bad. What's the catch? Things have been rough these past few months. We lost a couple staff members. Replacing them has been tough. I've always had a policy of hiring musicians. However, I've had to be a little more open-minded lately. More often than not, it's queer musicians who want to come work for me, and I'm thrilled to provide that opportunity. The music bro crowd doesn't feel comfortable working for a gay man and his husband, which is fine. Homophobes need not apply. That all said, queer musicians often come with a lot of, uh, baggage. And that baggage can cause problems for me and my bottom line. Every incident serves as a lesson learned. Over the years, I've developed a key eye for which qualities I prefer, I prefer candidates to have and which ones I need to avoid. Turns out, I became a little too strict to my criteria and couldn't find anybody. Now I have to start considering folks who are less than ideal. Less than ideal? He doesn't mean you, dummy. Oh, I see. It's my turn to break eye contact. His expression turns remorseful, then he realizes the impact of what he had just said. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't mean you. You've done great today. I promise it's not just empty flattery, either. I gave him a half-hearted smile. I don't think he meant that as a personal slight, but it feels like a Freudian slip. What he says out loud when he believes are in conflict. It's just that I understand not everybody I hire is going to be perfect. Everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. In your case, your strength is your retail experience. Really shine through today. April told me about the distortion pedal you helped up upsell. She didn't mention she wanted to give me credit for it. Thanks, April. Upselling a piece of equipment you didn't even know existed yesterday shows so much potential. It makes me very happy I decided to give you a chance. All right, Chester, your attempt at damage control has been successful. Well done. I'm really sorry, bud. I hope you don't think I meant... It's fine. Don't worry about it. I, I get what you mean. He breathed a sigh of relief. All right. Well, enough about that. Let's finish some more, Let's finish some more training. For the next couple hours, Chester fills the gaps left behind from April and Pat's training sessions. There were a lot of, there were a lot of minutia that those two understandably had to gloss over. Before I knew it, it was time to start closing preparation. Vacuuming, disinfecting instruments, rearranging merchandise, cashing out the register drawers, and so on. 7 p.m. rolled around. It was officially time to call it a night. There we go. Not much to it. Yeah, not bad at all. Cleaning up a shop like this is all too familiar to me, but I'm left wondering. Will I ever have to clean up in the cafe? That seems like a whole other beast to tackle. Say, will I ever have to learn to clean the kitchen at some point? Only if you want to learn to work back there. What do you mean, if I want to learn? Well, I'd like to offer you all the chance to try a variety of things. That way you can find your niche, you know? Is that why Pat focuses more on the kitchen stuff? Exactly. The boy has taken a liking to baking. Says he wants to get more experience and maybe even try culinary school sometime. Oh, wow. Good for him. Yeah, I hope he follows through, but we'll see. On the other paw, April is more interested in the retail and business side of things, so I let her take the reins with the front of house and event planning. Never in a million years would any of my past bosses take the initiative to let workers explore a variety of roles and stick to a niche they liked. I was always just given a job to do and was asked and was tasked with performing that job without question or objection. There often wasn't any room to grow and learn. It's a great opportunity to get more experience. <sighs> I'll never pass up a chance to bolster my, my resume. Say, could I get some more experience with the cafe tomorrow? Absolutely. Pat's leaving early tomorrow, so that works out nicely. He and I continue our last-minute closing tasks before calling it quits. Chester shuts off all the lights and locks up before we make our exit to the parking lot. The older luxury car was the only one remaining in the lot. Not a surprise this one belongs to Chester. Climbing in the passenger seat, the cabin space reveals that the vehicle is quite dated, like I had suspected. It's still furnished with a CD and cassette player on the main console. Cars nowadays come equipped with digital displays as interfaces, something completely absent from Chester's ride. Regardless, the pristine condition of the car's interior and the sleek design could fool me into believing this is a brand new vehicle, fresh from the lot. It doesn't quite have the new car smell, but the interior does have quite a lovely fragrance. I think it's... lavender? I'm just taking you straight to April's apartment, right? Yep. Easy enough. I know the way. 
Chester starts up the car and pulls out of the lot. So, feeling good about everything so far? Yeah, I guess. I still feel like I have a lot of music terminology to catch up on. Hey, if that's your biggest problem you're doing, you're gonna do just fine. There's a short stretch of silence before he poses a question to me. So, any chance you have plans on Labor Day weekend? If I recall correctly, Labor Day is about three weeks from now. Um, no, I don't think so. Why? Do you need me to work? Huh? No, it's Labor Day. Why would I make you work on a holiday? The shop's not gonna be open on Labor Day? Absolutely not. It's literally a holiday meant to celebrate relaxing and recouping from work. Have your past bosses asked you to work on Labor Day? Uh-huh. I don't think I've had a Labor Day off since I was 16. Chester lets out a devastated sigh. Oh, you poor thing. I forget how rough it is out there sometimes. Oh, that's nothing. I've had to work on Thanksgivings, New Year's, even Christmas. Good grief. That's, that's just not right. Well, I promise you, I'll never ask you to work on any holidays. I can take it or leave it. After working so many holidays, they become meaningless to me. There's only so many times you can listen to All I Want for Christmas as you over the intercom at a workplace before your fur turns green. Anyways, uh, the reason I asked is because I'm planning a beach trip for our staff. You and April's girlfriend are invited to join. That sounds nice, but I don't think I can afford a beach trip right now. My bank account took such a massive hit from the move. Well, thanks for offering, but I don't think I can afford that. Oh, don't worry about affording anything. I'm covering lodging, food, and transportation. You don't have to spend a dime. Oh, so it's a free vacation. Well, that changes everything. The shop will be closed, so I'll have nothing else to do. Yeah, this is a no-brainer. Not to mention, I get to see Pat, Chester, and Dave all in swimwear? Sign me the fuck up. Well, in that case, I'm in. Sounds like a lot of fun. Great. I also have enough room at the beach house for everyone to bring a plus one. Just something for you to keep in mind. Before I know it, we're already pulling into the apartment complex. Here's where I leave you, good sir. I'll see you tomorrow? For sure. And buckle my seatbelt and exit the car. Thanks for the ride. My pleasure. Have a good night. You too. Chester pulls away. I enter inside the building. I walk in the front door to find Mariah and April nestled on the couch under a blanket watching TV, knee-deep in a crime drama. Hey! <clears throat> hey, the working man's back. Tell me about your day, sunshine. She pats, she pats an open seat next to her on the couch. I go sit. Well, it was something. My boss is super nice. My co-workers are... April shot me a glare. Interesting. You didn't give him any trouble today, did you? Not any more than he deserved. She let out a chuckle while Mariah let out a melodramatic sigh. April! Mariah gives her a gentle yet firm shove. You need to be looking out for him. This is his first time moving anywhere new. He needs all the support he can get. Mo, I'm not a baby. I know, but I just want to make sure you get your footing around here. I know you've been really nervous about fitting in and making new friends. She's not wrong. Mariah can be overbearing sometimes, but at the end of the day, I know she's just looking out for me. Maybe I can help ease her anxiety by telling her about uh, meeting Daryl. Well, as it turns out, I think I did make an acquaintance today. Oh, really? What's their name? His name's Daryl. He plays in April's band. Correction, he plays in one of my bands. Oh, you told me about Daryl. He sounds like a sweet friend. See? You were so worried about making new friends, and you're already well on your way. I bet you'll find a new boyfriend in no time, mister. She uses a teasing tone. She knows all too well about my romantic frustrations. That being said, I didn't stop her from teasing me about it every once in a while, but in all honesty, I wouldn't have, any, I wouldn't have it any other way. I stand up from my seat. Alright, that's enough of that. I'm gonna go shower and wind down. Okay, okay, dear. Good night. Later. Finally. Upon entering my room, I shut the door down. I shut the door behind me and immediately flopped face down into my warm, cozy mattress. Sweet, sweet bed. We are reunited at long last. I lie there for a while, allowing myself to decompress from the one hell of a day I've just endured. Overall, it was a good day, though. I met lots of cool new folks, tried new things, and learned a great deal. I think I'm gonna like this job. Things are looking up for me, aren't they? I just need to get a grip on these negative feelings I've, had, I've been experiencing. I owe it to myself and Mariah to be the best version of myself I can be. I need to start making more of an investment in and improving my mental health. On that note, I think it's time for some long overdue self-care. Uh-oh. I'll skip the spicy scene. Oh god, that was very needed. I just wanna... <laughs> lay back now. I'm gonna save that under the... In the spice section right here. That's gonna be my spice section. 
spice. Skip spice is seen. Oh god, that was very needed. I just want to lay back now. Just for a... Oh, fuck. I sprang up fast from my reclined position and I definitely fell asleep. I checked my phone. 8.52pm. Oh, thank god. It was only for a few minutes. I find a towel on my hamper to wipe off the spunk on my torso. I'm not able to get everything out of my fur, though. If I didn't need a shower before, I certainly need it now. I wrap the towel around my waist and tiptoe across the hall to my bathroom. I drape my towel over the towel bar and set my phone on the counter. I run the shower for a moment to allow the water to warm up. Oh, I should turn on some tunes on Spotify before I get in. What should I listen to? Acoustic guitar. Something calm and soothing seems like the right choice before bed. I step inside the shower and let the cozy embrace of the warm, falling water ensnare me. There's nothing more comforting to me than the sensation of being surrounded by warm water. I don't care how it's done. It could be a hot bath, a hot spring, or a warm shower like this. Once the warm water saturates my fur and I can feel it on my flesh, I find myself in heaven. For the first few moments, I lazily stand under the water stream and allow my fur to completely soak from head to tail. I scrub down with generic shampoo, making sure to pay extra attention to my cum-soaked belly and chest. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Alright y'all, I'm gonna head out and enjoy the rest of my evening. Y'all do the same anyway. I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye